everyone, welcome to Tech It or Leave It, finding your true passion in tech, one podcast at a time. My name is Frances Marie Tevis, and today we will be interviewing someone awesome from the other side of the world. Today we'll be talking to the founder and CEO of Publio, Keith Reynolds. He helps clients imagine, plan, and produce digital media and marketing solutions. He also developed the Publisher's MO, a unique strategy and development methodology that empowers teams to achieve their business goals. For this episode, following our hashtag ECQ Diaries, what COVID-19 has taught us, we will be discussing on the importance of marketing in this very difficult time, like businesses are closing down, businesses are temporarily shutting down, and how does businesses, you know, should respond? Like, how do they actually pivot their way during the new normal? More on that from our next guest. Let's welcome for episode 23, Pivoting Marketing Strategies with Mr. Keith Reynolds. Hey, Hi, Keith. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. It's uh, so nice to be a guest here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited actually to talk to you ever since uh, me and Lorna. Hi, Miss Lorna, if you're watching this. Hey, Lorna. <laughs> Thank you so much for introducing us. Uh, for the past couple of weeks, Secretary David has been focusing on topics related to the pandemic, like COVID-19, because it has definitely affected how not just tech work, but you know, the entire world, how the world is functioning right now it's adapting to the pandemic and before we get into the marketing strategies on how to deal with pandemic i really want you to introduce yourself to our viewers because uh, not not all of them probably are familiar what marketing strategy is because we will be talking about we will be we are you know the audience are probably developers uh, mm -hmm. business owners here so yeah who is keith reynolds and what is publio uh, thank you so much. So uh, Keith Reynolds is a writer, producer, marketing strategist who helps companies uh, determine ways to go to market and how to put content on the internet that draws your customers into an experience. So how did you get into, you know, how did Publio start? Like how did you get into marketing strategy? Yeah, so um, I was, I had a very unique uh, uh, start to my career. I mm. was offered an apartment in New York City. I grew up in Evanston, Illinois, um, went to school at uh, Southern Illinois University, got a degree in hotel and restaurant management, um, and I produced concerts and events. <clears throat> and um, I, I was really passionate about rock and roll and <laughs> uh, jazz and I, I, I produced some great shows with, with well-known names. Um, mm. Probably one of my favorite was Dizzy Gillespie. Um, and when I got out of college, I was offered an apartment in Manhattan. And I picked up and I moved to Manhattan and started going to school. And I had a part-time job at an agency in New York City. And they told me to go down and work at a uh, Brownstone and on the uh, Lower East Side uh, of New York, and uh, I worked with these guys for two weeks, writing the manual to for college students to go out and sell the personal computers in college bookstores. And so, out of that, I decided I wanted to do this, and I was I started going to school. I went to grad school, took classes. Um, and I took this as a part-time job. And over the next 18 months, I switched from being a student to selling computers on the college campus and literally launched my career by putting on computer fairs, thinking about how I would have done it just two years before while I was on campus um, uh, to get people to go to a concert. Now I was getting people to go to the bookstore and learn about a computer. and. Uh, I, you know, was teaching people about wor a word processor and a, and a spreadsheet and a, and a PowerPoint kind of program. And you could, you could actually create a, a chart or a graph in, in Excel and put it into 
uh, a Word document. And people had never been able to do this. People used to type on on paper and you know backspace uh, with a with whiteout or use whiteout to make a change. And so it was really revolutionary in the way people were getting their education. And I dive into that because it was very educational, right? People didn't know how to what a computer could do. So as I did that, and I was with IBM for seven years, um, eventually by 1995, the internet was coming to be. I had been involved in all this technology uh, through the years and was kind of using technology to market technology. And when the web came along, uh, pretty early on, like 1994, 95, I realized that a website could replace the college bookstore. And all that promotion that we did out around the campus and the advertising we got in the campus paper uh, in this in this ecosystem, right? This campus ecosystem to get people to go into the bookstore. Um, you could do promotions to get people to go to a website and you could educate people on a website and get uh, customers that way. So I've been applying that through my whole career. And um, while I was at IBM during that seven years, I took some amazing training um, and had just uh, incredible experiences that not many people at that stage of technology had been exposed to. So, you know, by the time the 2000s came along, I'd, I'd uh, already written and produced probably 50 websites. And, um, and that's oh, sort of how I got into doing what I'm doing. And they've gone from being brochures and catalogs uh, to really uh, with some education. Full-blown science. Yeah, to now, you know, you, the entire customer experience is, is around the on, online engagement um, and, and overlapping what they do in the physical world. And so just learning to think and plan and organize things for people has just come naturally for me because I've been doing it for uh, a long time. Wow, that's like so inspiring. Imagine like having that you know, background in, you know, hotel, restaurant management, and then you went into, you know, uh, creating manuals for computers. And then that click, like you realize that, okay, I want to do this. How did you get, I just really want to follow up this question. How did you get into that point that, uh, okay, I'm just doing this part-time, but then I actually enjoyed what I do. Like, how did that happen? Uh, well, you know, like I said, I had incredible experiences. I, I was able to travel about a week every month. I was going out to uh, California, Georgia, Texas, Minnesota, Chicago, Toronto. Um, it, it was exciting, you know, to be 30 years old and, and literally just wherever I wanted to go, um, I would call, I literally could plan my trips around you know, people that I knew within the company and uh, go out and do trainings. And while I was doing that, I also had a, a computer programming project that I'm not a programmer, but I managed uh, uh, four of them. And so while I was traveling, I learned to work virtually from my hotel room and it was exciting. I mean, nobody, nobody worked that way back then. So um, it was pretty easy to get passionate about. Cool. I love that story. I'm. I hope that even now that everything is like <laughs> everything is given to us, like the, the the age of tech before and the age of tech now is so different. It, so, it, it is. <laughs> like the, the new advancement is is mind blowing, and it's easy to get to get you know very complacent about our skills in tech because we already have everything in our plate like we can google like how to solve this bug we can like check like every like if there's you have a question go to the internet probably someone has the same question as you are <laughs> we, we you know it's very interesting we really had to know back then because there was no tech support and the, and all you had was a manual um that sometimes you know they were they were really thick and um the 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 thing about marketing computers back then was you literally had to know how to make a computer work, connect it to a network um, and understand the settings for that or um, change out your own memory or, um, you know, s set it up, you know, for, for trade shows. And, and if you wanted to do a, a 
write a program or you wanted to do something, you had to write your own program. There was, it was really a, a, an amazing learning experience. So the, the fundamentals of, of how it all works, I understand. And now I look at a lot of people, you know, you, you buy, get your iPhone or your Android, you open it up, you turn it on, it walks you through it and it works, right? There's, there's not a lot of effort to, to get the fundamental technology work. So it allows you to focus more on, on the software side of things and the coding or the media. Awesome. Now let me just move into our, uh, related to our topic today, which is pivoting marketing strategies. Yeah. How is, how important is marketing strategy right now in this time? Like COVID-19 is a sensitive time, 2020 is a sensitive time. So how important is it that everyone should think about their marketing strategies? Oh man, it's, it's more important than ever. Um, uh, you know, marketing is problem solving. And, um, you know, uh, uh, when I talk about marketing, I mean, big M marketing, right? So everything that affects uh, bringing a product to a customer, um, often marketing is thought of as messaging and pretty pictures, but it's so much more. It's the product offering, um, you know, working with the engineers and the product team to, to turn that into something that people understand. Um, and, and not how it works, but what it, and turning that into what it does for people. And then the distribution, how do you get your product to the market? Promotion, customer service, um, creating a customer experience, uh, uh, the technology that you engage them with. All of those things become the mix you have that as you know, we've all experienced an economic slowdown, we've got to find a way uh, to, to stay in business. So you really, uh, you have to lean in. You can't cut your way to prosperity. Um, and, and when times get tough, you got to change. And so you're not going to bet the farm on every change, but marketing is also a method of putting things out into the marketplace, getting feedback, making an incremental change. Um, so, you know, if you can invent and innovate with your customers and engage them in that process, um, they're, they're going to have their problems solved and you're going to do better at, 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 at delivering for them, whether, you know, it's in the, the context of social distancing or them having less money, less cash flow, um, needing different services like delivery services for, for goods, um, home or office. Um, uh, I, I've worked with a, I got a great uh, video guy um, that, that has a technology where we can, um, use our cell phones to collect 4k video you put it on a tripod and he has a little window that when you're looking at your phone cameras at you you see the the screen as well and you see his face and he's giving you directions and prompting you just like i'm talking to you on a camera imagine having a director getting you to do a one minute uh, uh presentation and then his app just uploads the video and his production guy goes goes into post production and, and edits the video directly from your camera, and it erases it off your camera, and then you you get a link, and now you have a produced video. You can see an example of it on my website. Um, it that kind of innovation, you know, kicked into gear because, you know, almost immediately we found ourselves not able to leave the home. So being able to change that experience from saying, "Oh, I'll meet you at at the studio," or "I'll meet you." at your office and we'll, we'll make a video. It's now I can give you high quality video without leaving your home. That that's an example of what I mean by changing the marketing is about changing the way everything. So, he, you know, he, we found each other digitally um, connected through email and then, and then we did a zoom call and then uh, he told me about it. We got online and we tried it. Neither of us ever left our house. I can't hear you. Hello. There we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> was, that, how, how was, that? was that helpful? Yes, definitely. And mark, uh, yeah, marketing is critical. Lean in. Yes, like you have mentioned one very important note, like you change. So like in this time, businesses should be able to change because if they don't, they would definitely die. Like we've seen restaurants, you know, stop 
operation operations because they don't have online ordering and um, they're trying it their best to put everything in Facebook and then have Grab or you know Uber in the U.S. probably like delivery their food, but you know still customers didn't know that they're online. So let's say I'm a um, traditional <laughs> business owner. How do how do you talk to me in telling me that I need a new way of marketing to my customers, like the loyal ones? Like the host with punch cards, those with cards <laughs> that come to the restaurant and then order their favorite bagel or something. So, you know, we we have so many ways now to communicate, and selling is is communicating. And um, you know, it, I've been doing a, a show similar to this with Stanford Innovation Week. Um, for, we just did our, our 12th week um, of the show <clears throat> called Launch, and we interviewed three people uh, per show, 10 minutes, and we, we really dig into the, the, their why, who, what, and how. And it, it was all stimulated by um, uh, the COVID crisis. And we really wanted to dig in and understand how people are innovating. And I'm telling you, the, the things that people are doing are absolutely amazing. So. Um, you know, restaurants are are participating in civic events. We had restaurants that were uh, uh, providing food to our hospitals, um, providing food to the hungry. Um, uh, to, you know, rest. It used to be volunteers would cook for the homeless uh, in our communities, and now because we couldn't get volunteers to come and work, the restaurants were the only places that could really cook food and deliver. Uh, food to the homeless. Well, not only is that doing good for the community, but those people, you know, who are doing that kind of work get exposure. The restaurants get known uh, in our community and we want to support them. So at that level, is just a, a very basic thing you can do um, with a business like, like a restaurant. And then you have um, deliveries. And I know there's a big controversy over here about how much some of these delivery com companies are taking. Uh, from the the bill that you pay, mm -hmm. and so they're finding other ways to get orders uh, in and setting up their own kind of order uh, order systems online. So, um, and and then there's the the digital advertising, right? So, uh, being able to to use uh, uh, the different platforms like Facebook and Google um, to to make sure that you're having a media presence with with your uh, local community as well. So if you can't do it yourself, and that's uh, not uh, unreasonable, then, you know, try and get uh, somebody who, that is on your team that does that for you. And they might service um, other businesses in the community as well. So you don't have to know how every technology works to use it. But the, the key is if you, all of these things that we were just talking about can cumulatively help you get people to come to uh, the delivery services um, or just pick up a phone and place an order. Yeah, like the simple things actually matters at this time, like being creative, like going back to drawing board, like unlearn everything that I have did and then try to see how to adapt with everything. And, and if you don't, you know, the alternative to adapting is scary. <laughs> right? There's really the human spirit is, is about never quitting, never giving up, right? Enduring uh, all challenges and that. So here we are in unprecedented hard times and we're seeing unprecedented innovation, uh, whether it be, you know, big tech companies that are telling everybody in the entire company that can, they can work from home. Uh, in, in my company, uh, one of the companies I work with is, is the CMO. Uh, we have 80 people that are all working in in three, two countries, um, two cities in the United States, and a city in Serbia. Um, we have 80 people, and it it's we've had to re-engineer everything. So a lot of change, but a lot of ways to get things done. And um, I think you know we're already seeing some rebound in our economy here. Um, I don't think we're going to come back anywhere close to where we were, but you know I think that the this skidding to a halt is over and we're back, you know, trying to rebuild again. And, and that's the human spirit. 
yeah like marketing definitely shows how creative people are <laughs> and yep. once we mentioned about opportunities what opportunities now that can businesses can take advantage because of COVID-19 um you know a couple things come to mind uh i found a really cool little company that uh, i've introduced to a client um and and attended some of their their um demonstrations and talk to the people in the company and they're using artificial intelligence to write uh social media posts so you you um hey kate it's it's the company's lately um they're rock stars and what i've seen them do you can train the ai by pasting a url pasting content from a, a document or, or or putting a video uh, link in it and it parses through and you add you add keywords and it parses through and actually writes posts for you and it'll give you 25 or 38 or 50 posts and it kind of gives you a feed and as you as you go through the feed instead of having to write all 50 um, let, let's say 35 of those 50 are, are to your liking you can edit them and then schedule them out. And so it's a high volume way to create really good quality posts. Um, you know, we don't turn over the, the entire process to the, to the computer, right? So there's it, but getting it to write the first draft and then editing it and then being able to quickly schedule it from there is a huge time saver and uh, really, really an interesting application of artificial intelligence. Um, and then another startup I'm working with is all around uh, doing what we're doing uh, at scale. So being able to have um, online events and have people stream video and presentations um, and, and then engage the audience and get them to be um, uh, rating uh, the slide that they see or uh, asking questions. Um, uh, so, so there's a big revolution in, in the way that that's being, I, I, I say that, that the webinars have been around a while and they're kind of uh, not great. Podcasts are coming up online, but I think we're going to see a, a, a surge of, of the use of those kinds of medium uh, to, all, to make companies uh, uh, show up online as if they were a media company, a television network. Uh, you're going to have a host of a company. You're going to, you know, talk about um, coming to our next podcast segment, right? You're going to talk about putting on a show. Uh, you're going to script things out, and, and much differently than just doing a technical demonstration or, or trying to teach a product, which I think is the way most companies are using the, the presentation technology now. So it, it, it's, I'm seeing that with current technology, people are changing the way they're trying to use it. But I'm seeing also like uh, Shannon's company and Captive. Hey, Shan. Uh, Hi, Shanna. Hey, Shan. Shout out to Shan. Um, <laughs> I'm seeing I'm seeing uh, innovators like her take the experience to an entirely different level. And it, you know, for her, it's putting the entire event online and having breakout rooms and having and being able to coordinate many speakers from all over the world that come online together and put on an event. Yeah, that's a very different uh, change. So artificial intelligence and online experience, uh, uh, things that help you put on a show, either as an event producer or a company, are, are really um, two, two of the trends that I see. What I really liked about what you said is that uh, now people are taking advantage of the things that are not really, uh, you know, something that they wanted to be involved with like they see that ai okay they thought they would just do this for computing now they're using it in their simple basics like hi everyone welcome to tech it or leave it finding your true passion in tech one podcast at a time my name is francis marie tevis and today we will be interviewing someone awesome from the other side of the world today i will be talking to the founder and ceo of publio keith Reynolds, he helps clients imagine, plan, and produce digital media and marketing solutions. He also developed 
the publisher's MO, a unique strategy and development methodology that empowers teams to achieve their business goals. For this episode, following our hashtag ECQ Diaries, what COVID-19 has taught us, we will be discussing on the importance of marketing in this very difficult time, like businesses are closing down, businesses are temporarily shutting down, and how does businesses you know, should respond? Like how do they actually pivot their way during the new normal? More on that from our next guest. Let's welcome for episode 23, Pivoting Marketing Strategies, with Mr. Keith Reynolds. Hey, Hi, Keith. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. It's uh, so nice to be a guest here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited, actually, to talk to you ever since uh, me and Lorna. Hi, Miss Lorna, if you're watching this. Hey, Lorna. <laughs> Thank you so much for introducing us. Uh, for the past couple of weeks, Secretary David has been focusing on topics related to the pandemic, like COVID-19, because it has definitely affected how not just tech work, but you know, the entire world, how the world is functioning right now. It's adapting to the pandemic. And before we get into the marketing strategies on how to deal with pandemic, I really want you to introduce yourself to our viewers because uh, not, not all of them probably are familiar what marketing strategy is because we will be talking about we will be we are you know the audience are probably developers uh, business owners here so yeah who is keith reynolds and what is publio uh thank you so much so uh keith reynolds is a writer producer marketing strategist who helps companies uh determine ways to go to market and how to put content on the internet that draws your customers into an experience. So how did you get into, you know, how did Publio start? Like, how did you get into marketing strategy? Yeah, so um, I was, I had a very unique uh, uh, start to my career. I mm. was offered an apartment in New York City. I grew up in Evanston, Illinois. Um, went to school at uh, Southern Illinois University, got a degree in hotel and restaurant management, um, and I produced concerts and events. <clears throat> and um, I, I was really passionate about rock and roll and uh, <laughs> jazz, and I, I, I produced some great shows with, with well-known names. Um, mm. Probably one of my favorite was Dizzy Gillespie. Um, and when I got out of college, I was offered an apartment in Manhattan. And I picked up and I moved to Manhattan and started going to school. And I had a part time job at an agency in New York City. And they told me to go down and work at a uh, brownstone in, in, on the uh, Lower East Side uh, of New York. And uh, I worked with these guys for two weeks writing the manual to for college students to go out and sell the personal computers in college bookstores. And so out of that, I decided I wanted to do this. And I, was, I started going to school. I went to grad school, took classes, um, and I took this as a part-time job. And over the next 18 months, I switched from being a student to selling computers on the college campus and literally launched my career by putting on computer fairs thinking about how I would have done it just two years before while I was on campus um, uh, to get people to go to a concert. Now I was getting people to go to the bookstore and learn about a computer. And uh, I you know, was teaching people about wor a word processor and, and a spreadsheet and a, and a PowerPoint kind of program. And you could, you could actually create a, a chart or a graph and in Excel and put it into uh, a Word document. And people had never been able to do this. People used to type on, on paper and you know backspace uh, with, a, with whiteout or use whiteout to make a change. And so it was really revolutionary in the way people were getting their education. And I dive into that because it was very educational, right? People didn't know how to, what a computer could do. So as I did that, and I was with IBM for seven years, um, 
eventually by 1995, the internet was coming to be. I had been involved in all this technology uh, through the years and was kind of using technology to market technology. And when the web came along, uh, pretty early on, like 1994, 95, I realized that a website could replace the college bookstore. And all that promotion that we did out around the campus and the advertising we got in the campus paper uh, in this in this ecosystem, right? This campus ecosystem to get people to go into the bookstore. Um, you could do promotions to get people to go to a website and you could educate people on a website and get uh, customers that way. So I've been applying that through my whole career. And um, while I was at IBM during that seven years, I took some amazing training um, and had just uh, incredible experiences that not many people at that stage of technology had been exposed to. So, you know, by the time the 2000s came along, I'd, I'd uh, already written and produced probably 50 websites. And, um, and that's oh, sort of how I got into doing what I'm doing. And they've gone from being brochures and catalogs uh, to really uh, with SM education. Full blown science. Yeah, to now, you know, you, the entire customer experience is, is around the on, online engagement um, and, and overlapping what they do in the physical world. And so just learning to think and plan and organize things for people has just come naturally for me because I've been doing it for uh, a long time. Wow, that's like so inspiring. Imagine like having that, you know, background in, you know, hotel, restaurant management. And then you went into you know, uh, creating manuals for computers. And then that click, like you realize that, okay, I want to do this. How did you get, I just really want to follow up this question. How did you get into that point that, uh, okay, I'm just doing this part-time, but then I actually enjoyed what I do. Like, how did that happen? Uh, well, you know, like I said, I had incredible experiences. I, I was able to travel about a week every month. I was going out to, uh, California, Georgia, Texas, Minnesota, Chicago, Toronto. Um, it, it was exciting, you know, to be 30 years old and, and literally just wherever I wanted to go, um, I would call, I literally could plan my trips around, you know, people that I knew within the company and uh, go out and do trainings. And while I was doing that, I also had a, a computer programming project that I'm not a programmer, but I managed uh, uh, four of them. And so while I was traveling, I learned to work virtually from my hotel room and it was exciting. I mean, nobody, nobody worked that way back then. So um, it was pretty easy to get passionate about. Cool. I love that story. I'm, I hope that even now that everything is like <laughs> everything is given to us <laughs> like the, the the age of tech before and the age of tech now is so different it, so it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the new advancement is is mind-blowing and it's easy to get to get you know very complacent about our skills in tech because we already have everything in our plate like we can google like how to solve this bug we can like check like everything like if there's you have a question go to the internet probably someone has the same question as you are <laughs> we, we you know it's very interesting we really had to know back then because there was no tech support and the, and all you had was a manual um that sometimes you know they were they were really thick and um the 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 thing about marketing computers back then was you literally had to know how to make a computer work, connect it to a network um, and understand the settings for that or um, change out your own memory or, um, you know, set it up, you know, for, for trade shows. And, and if you wanted to do a, a write a program or if you wanted to do something, you had to write your own program. There was, it was, really a, a, an amazing learning experience. So the, the fundamentals of, of how it all works, I understand. And now I look at a lot of people, you know, you, you buy, get your iPhone or your Android, you open it up, you turn it on, it walks you through it and it works, right? There's, there's not a lot of effort to, to get the fundamental technology work. So it allows you to focus more on, on the software side of things and the coding or the media. 
Awesome. Now let me just move into our uh, related to our topic today, which is pivoting marketing strategies. Yeah. How is how important is marketing strategy right now in this time? Like COVID nineteen is a sensitive time. Twenty twenty is a sensitive time. So how important is it that everyone should think about their marketing strategies? Oh man, it's it's more important than ever. Um, uh, you know, marketing is problem solving, and um, you know, I, I, when I talk about marketing, I mean big M marketing, right? So everything that affects. Uh, bringing a product to a customer. Um, often marketing is thought of as messaging and pretty pictures, but it's so much more. It's the product offering, um, you know, working with the engineers and the product team to, to turn that into something that people understand um, and, and not how it works, but what it, and turning that into what it does for people. And then the distribution, how do you get your product to the market? Promotion, customer service, um, creating a customer experience, uh, uh, the technology that you engage them with, all of those things become the mix you have that as you know, we've all experienced an economic slowdown, we've got to find a way uh, to, to stay in business. So you really, uh, you have to lean in, you can't cut your way to prosperity. Um, and, and when times get tough, you got to change. And so you're not going to bet the farm on every change, but marketing is also a method of putting things out into the marketplace, getting feedback, making an incremental change. Um, so, you know, if you can invent and innovate with your customers and engage them in that process, um, they're, they're going to have their problems solved and you're going to do better at, at, at delivering for them, whether, you know, it's in the, the context of social distancing or them having less money, less cash flow, um, needing different services like delivery services for, for goods, um, home or office. Um, uh, I, I've worked with a, I got a great uh, video guy um, that, that has a technology where we can um, use our cell phones to collect 4K video. You put it on a tripod and he has a little window. If, if you see a, a 20, 30, 50% drop in sales, um, the only way you're going to get back up there is to sell your way out of that problem. And, and I, I wanted to say earlier, I don't think, I think I skipped over it, but you can't cut your way to prosperity. <laughs> exactly. So. Um, it, let me just uh, ask this one. What are the bad sides of adapting into a marketing strategy that doesn't really work? Like, what are the risks? Oh, like I, we've I been think... talking about the advantages of you know innovation, having an agile mind in do, in going into this. But people, especially the <laughs> the very careful ones, want to know about the bad side of this, the risk of this. Yeah. So. You know, uh, well, here's a, a way to think about it is that if if you have, I think that smaller companies have to be better at planning, right? And being able to, planning is about looking out over a 12 month period and looking at spending some money for marketing over 12 months. So that if you decide to try something in the first quarter and it doesn't work, you can take a look at, at a spreadsheet that's you know a budget that's built over a year and know that you haven't you haven't bet the whole farm if it doesn't work and you have a plan part of that plan is when do i stop doing it right if i if i can't hit my goal in, in month two why would i you know i might want to adjust for month three but if i get into month four and month five and it's not working i can cut it off that means i haven't spent the whole year's budget right so having that longer term perspective, thinking about it in terms of what can I do? Um, and, and the other side of it is you want to look at the money that you spend, but you also want to look at what it would take to earn that back. You have to have an ROI model, right? So if I'm, I'm willing to have a budget for a year and I'm willing to start off for the first six months and really give it a go before I make adjustments and realizing I haven't bet the farm in the first six months, um, but if I can get a 10% growth in sales, what's that worth to me? 
right? I, I want to try and plan something where I, I can literally get a 10 or 20 or 30 or 50% growth in sales because I'm trying to do something different. Um, but also be aware that, that I can do that in a, 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 a plan. So my risks are known. And I think one thing I, when I work with smaller businesses, they, they don't invest in the planning phase of it. So just really plan, like be prepared. If everything goes down, you have a backup plan, have another backup plan for that backup. Plan. That, that's right. And, and put that plan out there and get your, your team to look at it and see how uh, you, you can improve it and, and lower the risk. Yeah. And aside from that, make sure that you execute the plan. <laughs> like some, some people just plan and then, okay, I'm going to start that next month. And then the next so month, okay, I'm going to plan it next year. Project management is critical, right? The difference between good marketing and bad marketing is usually project management. You know, marketers that don't uh, get things done are, all, are famous for saying, it's going to be great when it gets here. We're almost there. It's like, no, we have to deliver. Okay. Now we talk a lot about marketing strategies and how to deal with this during the pandemic. Let's go back to Keith. <laughs> you have spent over 11 years in working with big companies like IBM and uh, Apple. What made you go and then start your own? Aside from your backstory, like, you know, you wanted to do this full time and then you, you find enjoy, enjoyment in what you do. Like, this is your passion. But to actually find that, you know, okay, I'm starting my own company. I know what I do. And, you know, the process of actually putting it together, can you briefly share that to us? If we have, like, uh, those motivational um, uh, people who are looking for motivation right now. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, now more than ever is the time that you can say, I want to have my own business, right? I mean, legitimately within school, I was, I was doing a talk uh, with college students at UConn. Hey, David Noble. Love Hi, you, David. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he, he's a guy that's passionate about working with students to help them see that they can be, uh, they can have an entrepreneurial career or they can have a corporate career. Uh, and, and, uh, and I think that, you know, today, no matter where you are, a corporate career can be really good for stability and it can be really good for uh, training and it can be really good uh, from a, a stability standpoint. Uh, but the fact is, is that the world changes and corporate careers are not 30 years anymore, right? They're, so uh, you may find yourself uh, having your, through no fault or choice of your own, no longer in your corporate job, having entrepreneurial skills have, helps you land on your feet, even if it's just to get you to the next corporate job, right? Having a side hustle. So I, I think that the lines are blurring um, and that the, uh, investing in yourself to be able to be an entrepreneur um, as well as that corporate skills, both are important. Does that answer your question? I feel like I got a little bit down a rabbit hole there. <laughs> it does answer like the motivation part, like investing in yourself. But I want to know about your struggles. Like, I know mm -hmm. it, it's not a straight path, like going into where you are now. No, like, I, I, it, you know, the, th the life of the entrepreneur is um, a, a series of highs and lows. We were talking about corporate, you kind of have an evenness. Um, mm -hmm. And while that's kind of disappeared, um, uh, the, the entrepreneurial life is probably a lot more variable. Uh, but when you, when you hit it, it's great. And if you, if you're smart about, you know, not blowing all your money and blowing your savings, the entrepreneurial life can be really great because, you know, having an exit, if you decide to go down that path can be fantastic. I love that. Like, you know, it's, there's highs and lows and then, you know, you should know when you need to stop. And that's very important right now. Like, you know where you need to go, but if it's not working, you know where to stop. And then you have a backup plan. It's all coming back to the plan and to the execution. And, and I'd recommend a book um, by a mentor of mine, Bob Dorf, uh, called The Startup. Pardon me? What's the name, Bob Dorf? Bob Dorf. And okay. um, uh, 
uh, uh, Steve Blank drew a blank, I drew a blank on Steve Blank. They wrote a book <laughs> called the Startup Owner's Manual. And it, it's really an agile process for starting a company. And that, that can uh, help you plan for that, that variability, right? There's times when you have, uh, you're, you're trying to raise money uh, or find other ways to fund your, your operation. And then, but eventually you've gotta be uh, uh, outselling. You know, uh, uh, what, what, you know, I always ask people, what's the first thing you need to have a company? Or to have uh, a business. What's the first thing you need? A problem that you need to solve. Okay, not where I'm going. What what <laughs> else? I'm a tech person. Like that's like that's where you started. A problem yeah. state. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a, that's a very techy answer. What, <laughs> what literally, if you want to be an entrepreneur, do you need to have a business? Oh yeah, I missed that one. <laughs> I, I would submit to you, it's a customer. Right. If, if you don't have a paying customer, you have a project. Yeah. Right. So training yourself to think that way is critical because it focuses your mind on always finding customers and always solving problems. And, you know, w with that in mind and with a book like the Startup Owner's Manual, which is like sold over half a million copies in 26 languages. I mean, it's really an amazing book. I have a copy of it. Um, and, and I learned a tremendous amount. Um, and then I had the for good fortune of meeting Bob and, and getting some mentoring from him. So uh, it's, a, it's a great thought process. It's a great you know, manual, literally a startup owner's manual um, and, and an approach to, to help you approach it as a discipline you know, that you can learn and improve upon. Startup owner's manual. I'll check startup that out. I'll add it in the description later for uh, us <laughs> to check it out. Because I you know what I forgot it. to get. Oh, cool! <laughs> I as long as we're plugging books. <laughs> oh, the new content culture. Yes, uh, this is that's from my you. My book. Uh, and and I I bring it up. Um, because it's also another process to, it, it, it's a short manual for how to approach that marketing, you know, and it's a scalable idea. It doesn't matter whether you're a restaurant um, or a consultant or you're a company with a marketing department, right? It's, there's, there's a, a methodology of seven buckets to help you connect with your customer digitally. Cool. Okay, I'll add that in the description below in case you want to check that book out. Is it available online? It is on Amazon. Okay, cool. All right. I'll give you like a 30 seconds to breathe. <laughs> um, the title great. for this podcast is actually Finding Your True Passion in Tech. And it's the last two questions in the podcast. So... We've talked about how you started, how marketing works, how it's very important at this time in, in, in the pandemic and what's the new normal looking in the future, hopefully in the next couple of months or years. <laughs> yeah. um, how did you find yourself in where you are now? Like, how did you find your passion? And if you were to give someone advice who's now lost in the career in tech or probably in business, What's the right way to find their passion in tech? You know, so here's what happened to me. I, over the course of the years in writing and producing websites and you know, doing the consulting side of it as well as the creative side. Of it. So I, I, I refer to it as writing and producing as the creative side of building a website, but the consulting side is making it fit within the business, right? And support your sales and marketing efforts. And um, and to me, that was a passion, but over the course of time, um, I had several projects that had a theme of, uh, instead of being a brochure or something that was just selling, that it was educational. And I, I've learned that if you think about and learn, if you know the problem well enough, and instead of thinking about how something works, instead, uh, educate people to be a good customer, right? An educated customer is your best customer, as Sai Sims used to say. Um, 
I, I had these moments where I worked on on websites that people actually really uh, got passionate about, and, um, and and they reached out to the company and said, "I want to do business with you," and and that became my passion. And um, I did one project called Chief Packaging Officer. I had two really really big ones in the last five years, and. Uh, Chief Packaging Officer was great because we 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 worked for Kodak. Uh, we produced this magazine with uh, great editorial content. We put on webinars. We built our audience. We doubled the size of the email database. Uh, we filled the pipeline with 57 sales qualified leads, which was a lot of money to the company. And we had so much that that they Kodak actually sold the division. And this, this online magazine, Chief Packaging Officer, that had all this great content that, that people were really loving, became part of the sale. And I realized that, that online content is uh, now much more than just sales material. It has enterprise value. And when an acquiring company wanted not just the technology and the business, but they wanted that media property that we built, I knew something had changed. And I started speaking about it, right? And so if you want to get passionate about something, start public speaking, right? And get feedback. And the more I talked about it, people started saying, you should write a book. And so then I got this idea, well, I should write a book, but I never, I kept delaying it and delaying it. And then um, I was, now I say fortunate enough, but um, I was working for a company and I got laid off and I took a, a part-time gig producing Stanford Innovation Week, and I was hanging out with all of these cool people doing all this you know, cool startup stuff. And I realized if I don't write my book now, I'm never going to do it. And so that's how Publio got started. That, but it was inspired by the fact that I had been doing something long enough, and I started to see the patterns, and I was able to go out and do some public speaking about it. And that gave me the feedback and the confidence to say I actually wanted to write the book. And I would encourage anyone else to take that path, whether it's coding, whether it's teaching, you know, whether it's being an accountant. You know, when, once you crack the code and you know that this is really cool, go out and start talking to people about it. And you know, maybe takes I took public speaking classes when I knew that this was the path I wanted to go on. And and you you know, our brains are amazing. If we reach out and start trying to learn, and especially today, there's so many ways to, to do that. Um, you, you can connect in and do whatever you want. And I encourage you to. So your process is uh, find something that you're passionate about or you like, and then try it out. Don't delay it. Talk about it. Get some feedback if you're actually good at it. And then continue if you are. Like, I Absolutely. love that you yeah. explained it as a process. Because there's not, again, a straight path in achieving the real thing you have to put some blood sweat and tears in it if you do and, and never quit never quit never quit awesome okay now i promised that i said that that was the second to last question but i had to insert this <laughs> <laughs> if you can summarize anything about marketing strategies especially now during covid 19 uh, talking to business owners uh companies who still denies that okay I can still you know flap my way around this and then I, everything will be go will go back to normal eventually like how can you talk to them and tell them that you need innovation you need to change mm. well uh, probably the best metric is to look at your competition um, if your con if, if your competitors are all doing nothing and their businesses are going well, and you're doing nothing and your business isn't doing well, and maybe it's something else. If their business is not doing well and they're doing nothing and your business isn't doing well and doing nothing, well, you, you now are in a situation where you can really stand above the crowd. And, you know, business, you know, in my culture, right, business is about winning. And it's not about, it's not about somebody else losing, but it's about winning and achieving your goals. And, and a really good men benchmark though, is the competition. Uh, you need to differentiate yourself from the competition. You can learn from the competition. Uh, you, you will be uh, forced to change by the competition. So uh, I would just say, if you're a skeptic, 
go look at the competition and learn from them. And then uh, also ask your customers questions. What do you like? What do you not like? What do you, what, what is, what is an inconvenience? You know, some of the best businesses have started because somebody asked the customer, why is this inconvenient? And, and they found a more convenient way to do, do something for customers. So uh, don't, don't be a skeptic. Uh, I, I would encourage you to be an optimist and, and lean in and try some new things. I love your answer that, you know, look at the other people, like check it out. Like if, are they changing? And if you're not changing and you're not doing well, then it's not, it's no longer, you know, their fault. It's your fault. You have to change something because if you don't, your competition will leave you behind. So if sure. someone is adapting to change, there's no reason that you can't. Too. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and it, you know, again, it doesn't mean you bet the farm, uh, but we live in a world that's changing so much that we have to adapt. Uh, to survive, and so I just think that old that you were describing it sort of as the old old school way. I'm not going to change. Um, I, I think that that's it, it's not going to fly. Mm -hmm. It's going to be harder to be a business owner uh, or a manager with that attitude. Um, it's really much more about um, leadership and, and setting a vision and getting a team together and getting people passionate about things. You know, that's that's when companies grow, whether you want to be a small company or you want to have the next uh, Google, um, you know, having a winning attitude and being a team player and being a leader, you know, those qualities never go away and they're, they're universal. Thank you so much, Keith. We're close to the one hour month uh, mark in our podcast. Boy, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed our conversation. And for our last question, I always ask this to all of my guests. What's next for Keith? Like the Miss Universe question. <laughs> you know, I feel like I just stepped into my what's next. Um, this, this past 10 months, I, I, I've published a book. I've been doing public speaking. Um, uh, putting on events and attending events, uh, you know, as a speaker. And then uh, as COVID uh, took over, we, you know, I, we, we just adjusted and now all the appearances I'm doing are digital. Uh, even though I was doing digital before, now it's the only kind of event that I'm doing. Um, and, and so going down this path is pretty new. You know, the book uh, published at the beginning of September and, um, and, and it's just been a challenge. So my, my what next is to take this to the next level um, and, and, you know, having the opportunity, uh, you know, you're so gracious to have me on your show, you know, having this opportunity is helping me achieve my, my what's next and giving me a chance to talk to people on the other side of the globe. So, you know, what could be better than that? Um, oh, there is my, <laughs> thank you so much for yeah. contacting me. I'm actually so excited to see, you know, you become bigger and then how you can actually help people or businesses in here on the other side, because with the culture, in people or businesses in the U.S. is different here in Asia. Like we're used to different things and it's nice to see things in a different perspective. So I hope that this podcast <laughs> hopefully can see and open new things for you. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, I hope, you know, back to what you're doing, I, I, I think it's admirable uh, to, you know, I've heard some of your other interviews, you, you really do a great job, you're, you're, you're uh, a good listener, you ask great questions. So I, I wish you all the best on this show. And I hope that, you know, you inspire people to find their own tech, right? Because tech is just a tool. It's, it's not the be all end all it, it's, um, it's like a hammer for a carpenter. Uh, so if you find your passion, no matter what it is, you can involve tech in it, even if your passion is tech and, and coding, um, all of these things that we're talking about, you know, you're going to succeed because you're a marketer, you're going to succeed because you can sell, even if your job is being a coder, you got to sell your ideas, right? You got to, you got to find new ways to do things and then encourage other people to try it your way. Um, so the, 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 everybody shares that learning and, and improves together. You know, that, the best coders I've seen are, you know, they, 
they help other coders learn and they bring everybody along. So tech is a tool, uh, whether it's coding or media, um, you know, it's, it's a way to help you find your passion. And I think your show just does such a great job. Doing it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much. So before we end this podcast, Keith, do you have uh, links or any information that you want to share to the audience where they can contact you, uh, where they can get their new book, any links that you want? Uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, the, the new content culture. Uh, thank you, Lorna, for all your inspiration and support. I love you. Um, you can find it on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, it's you know, if you put in the new content culture Keith Reynolds, you'll find it there. You can also go to Publio, p u b l i dot i o, and uh, learn a little bit more. I have a free ROI calculator uh, online, and um, uh, download that. I hope that helps you. You know, do that planning and take a little bit longer view of what marketing can be for you. And um, uh, if I can help at all, you know, you can contact me through the website. Uh, or, or um, my, my phone number is on there, uh, email's on there, hello at Publio, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Keith. And I, indeed, I learned a lot from you. I hope to hear more about Publio and your new book. I will put all the details below, guys. So if you have other questions for Keith, follow us on how to pivot your marketing strategies. Everything will be done in the description box. And before I end this podcast, I just want to feature this organization that personally I haven't been involved in, which is called the Rice Movement. It's a organization that helps hardworking Filipinos who have lost their jobs due to COVID-19. So as of May, there's about 7 million Filipinos who have lost their jobs due to COVID-19. And the Rice Movement's help uh, by giving them sacks of rice to survive for a month. So if you have anything to share, I also put the details below on how to donate to the rice movement. And of course, before I end this, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Keith Reynolds. Thank you so much for sparing your evening with us. I know it's about 10, 20 there in the in US. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for sparing your time now. I know it's a Thursday. It's been a pleasure and, and I'm very grateful to have the opportunity. Thank you so much. I enjoyed talking to you earlier actually my camera went down like if you if you notice that the angle is different this is just me <laughs> like trying to check out <laughs> how to make this work because my main camera is down so thank you so much and i'm so happy that we have pushed through until the end of this podcast this podcast will be available in all places that you listen podcast use spotify anchor this will be uploaded in youtube and on the Facebook page, Tech It or Leave It. If you want to partner with the podcast, you can check out Tech It or Leave It in Facebook and Instagram. Contact me at techitorleaveitph at gmail.com. And if you have personal questions or anything that you want to ask me or Keith Reynolds, all the details will be down on the description below. Thank you so much, Keith. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your night <laughs> and the rest of the week. <laughs> Thank you so much. And to all our business owners there, let me just say that Today is a very difficult time. Like 2020 is a challenging time, especially with the pandemic, with everything that's changing. But please know that you're not alone. Everyone is trying to adapt and trying to have that agile behavior. Like, you know, if we need to change, we need to adapt. And we, we have technologies and, you know, that we somehow think that it's boring, that we don't really use that much. But if we look into it, this will be a helpful tool, just like Keith said, that, that you can use for your business, for you to find your own passion and to educate yourself, yourself, especially in home quarantine. So stay safe, everyone, and I'll see you in the next episode. This has been Francis Marie Tevis for Tech It or Leave It. And I'd like to thank again our guest, Mr. Keith Reynolds from Publio. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thanks.